Hey everybody, welcome to Brela, City of Progress. A Euro-style board game for 2-4 to four players, set at the start of the 20th century. As one of the keen businessmen and women of the age, there's never been a better time to fulfill your aspirations. Start new businesses, get involved in international trade, build monuments throughout the city, earn wealth and glory. But no one can thrive on their own. Each is but a small part in a much larger ecosystem. So, balance during the game, personal gain with public benefit and development. You play as one of the six historically inspired characters. Each with their unique player board, offering different businesses that you can create in a unique combination of private actions. As you play, you'll get a chance to fulfill up to four player story cards, writing a different history for your character each time. On your turn you will play an action card from hand, execute different public or private actions, gain bonuses and then draw one new card. Play then passes to the next player. The game ends when at least two of the four endgame conditions are met. The objective is to be the player with the most VPs at the end of the game. They can be won instantly, throughout the game. There are also several means to earn bonus VPs at the end. I will explain them in further detail later. Let's set up the game. Start with the game board, set in the middle of the table. If you look at the map you can identify three types of sections. Sector, a vertical section, like this, or this, denoted by number. Zone, a horizontal section, like this, or this, denoted by letter. Neighborhood, found at the intersection of a sector and a zone, like this, or this, denoted by a combination number plus letter. Place one bonus token face down in each neighborhood of the city. Shuffle the contracts into a stack. Draw two contracts and place them, along with two visitor meeples in their designated areas of the board. The visitor meeple area is called the river station. Set up the local market. Place one cube, of the color indicated by the top row, in the highlighted position within the column, thus setting the initial value for the commodities. Shuffle the bonus VP cards into a stack. Draw four cards and place them in their indicated spots, on the top left corner of the board. Shuffle the monument cards into a stack. Draw three monument cards and place them in their indicated spots, in the top right corner of the board. Shuffle the action cards into a deck. Place it next to the board. Next we'll draw one action card, in turn, for each of the four action cues and, if its color matches that of the queue, we'll place it there. Draw one action card and place it into the central open business queue. Since all three colors are associated, any card you draw will go here. Next, another card for the bottom left queue. Since it's orange, it does not match and we return it to the bottom of the stack. Next for the bottom right queue, it's green and it matches. We place it into the queue. Finally for the top right queue, it's purple, it does not match so we return it. Set the economy, culture and reputation level of the city at 1. Place the resource cubes, the money and the monument tokens in piles or stacks next to the game board. Each player chooses a color then places a disc in their color on the number 1 spot of the VP track. Each player either chooses or randomly selects a character player board. Then, each player receives in their color. 9 business HQ meeples, numbered. 7 external partnership agent meeples. Each player takes from the supply the starting resources and money indicated on their player board. They also place a colored disc on the influence track, at their starting value. Shuffle the player story cards into a deck. Each player draws 5 action cards and 6 player story cards. Gameplay plays in turns. On your turn, select one of the 5 action cards in your hand and play it into one of the 4 action cues. There are 3 ways to play an action card. As a public action, as a private action, or to gain the bonus printed on the card. At any point during your turn, you can also complete one of your player story cards. Finally, draw a new card. The core of the game is driven by the action cards. They have several areas. Color determines the type of public action you can perform with this card. The queue in which you place it determines the actual action. Orange, economy. Purple, reputation. Green, culture. The icons printed in the bottom section show the private action you can take. Play either one or both of the private actions. Bonus, that is gained when playing the card for its printed bonus. Can be influence, money or commodities. The game board has four action cues. Each queue has two card slots. Depending on the initial setup, some slots will be filled, some will be empty. On your turn, play a card into an action queue. You can play a card into a queue that's already full, bumping one of the existing cards, I'll explain it in detail later. The queues are unique, each with their own public actions available. This queue allows you to open a new business in Brela. It accepts any color of card, purple, green, orange. This one allows two actions. First, access the local market. It requires an orange card. The second is build a monument. It requires a green card. Here, the first is advertise the city. It requires a purple card. The second action is sell to boats fulfilling contracts. It requires an orange card. The first action here is invest in progress requiring a green card. The second is form new international partnerships. Requires a purple card. The progress levels of the three aspects of the city influence the power of public actions. They dictate how many times you can perform it. For example, if culture is at level 2, you can build two monuments with one action or open two cultural businesses. Whenever you play a card into an action queue, you can do it in the three ways outlined above, public action, private action or a gain bonus. As mentioned, you can play a card into a full queue, i.e. both slots already occupied. 
Whenever this happens, you will bump out an existing action card from the queue. Choose which of the two cards to bump out. Put the bumped out card aside for the moment. Then, play your action card into the queue, as usual. Next, take the bumped out card and play it into a different queue. You're again presented with the same three choices to play it. If this card has any business HQ Meeple on it, the owner of that business can now place the HQ Meeple in the city. Even if the Meeple's is yours, you cannot play it back into the queue from which it was bumped out. The three types of public actions available are, culture, economy, and reputation. Each includes three unique actions. Culture, invest in progress, build a monument, open cultural business. Economy, visit local market, sell to boats, open factory, reputation, open new international partnership, advertise the city, open reputation business. Let's look at them one by one. Invest in progress. Play a green action card into this queue. Pay the cost of the upgrade level for the aspect you want to progress. This symbolizes the resources necessary for research, development, and execution. The cost is shown as the second column in the three boxes representing culture, economy, and reputation. Apart from empowering public actions, investing in progress unlocks the gain bonus VP card private action. Finally, move the progress level indicator one step forward. Next, construct monument. Play a green action card into this queue. Pay the cost of the monument you wish to build. Then place the monument into one of the hexagonal monument locations around the city. You instantly gain the VPs depicted on the monument card, as well as any additional bonuses. Finally, open cultural business. Play a green action card into this queue. Pay to open the business by adding the cost of the column in the row it is located in. Place its business HQ meeple on the action card you played. You now own the business, although it is not yet fully operational. Adinya wishes to open the perfume boutique. The cost is 1 influence plus 1 influence for a total of 2. After paying, Adinya places the business HQ meeple on the action card used. Visit local market. Play an orange action card into this queue. You can now buy or sell commodities. The economy progress level determines how many types of commodities you can trade. You cannot buy and sell the same commodity, in the same turn. To buy, pay the cost according to the local market table for the quantity you want. Take the resources from the supply. Then increase the price by one unit. To sell, return from inventory the quantity you wish to trade. Receive money for the discarded quantity. Then decrease the price by one unit. Sell to boats. Play an orange action card into this queue. The economy progress level determines how many contracts you can fulfill. Discard the required money or commodities from your inventory. Then, gain the benefits depicted on the contract tile. Put the tile at the bottom of the stack and do not draw a new one. Open factory. Play an orange action card into this queue. Pay to open the business by adding the cost of the column in the row it is located in. Place its business HQ meeple on the action card you played. You now own the business, although it is not yet fully operational. Dumitri wishes to open the mill. The cost is 2 coins plus either 1 influence or 3 coins. He chooses 3 coins, for a total of 5, paying the cost. Dumitri places the business HQ meeple on the action card. International partnership. Play a purple card into this queue. Select a city from the international tableau which does not contain any player's external agent. Pay the cost printed next to the city. Place one of your agents on that city. Gain 3 influence. The yellow player wishes to open an international partnership with Athens. They pay 3 gray cubes, and place their agent on the city of Athens to symbolize establishing the partnership. The player then gains 3 influence. Advertise city. Play a purple card into this queue. You can now bring in new visitors and contracts to Brela. Use existing international partnerships, disregarding which player actually established that connection. The number of international partners you can advertise to is equal to the reputation progress level. If there are no international partnerships yet established you cannot use this action. To advertise, you spend influence. Use one or two influence per partner. For each one influence spent, you may bring in either one contract or two visitors. Brela has three international partners, Athens, London, and Barcelona. The reputation progress level is two. Two partners of the third of may be used, and a maximum of four influence spent. For example, with three influence, you can bring in one new contract and four visitors to Brela. Open reputation business play a purple card into this queue. Pay to open the business by adding the cost of the column in the row it is located in. Place its business HQ meeple on the action card you played. You now own the business, although it is not yet fully operational. Nadelku wishes to open the insurance company. The cost is 2 influence plus 2 influence for a total of 4. Paying the cost, Nadelku places the business HQ meeple on the action card. The second way to play action cards is to perform private actions. In this case, only the color of public actions associated with a queue limits where you can play a card. Let's start with your player board. The picture, name and historical facts about each character. The influence tracker. Each character's starting money, commodities and influence. The column component of the cost for opening a business. The row component of the cost for opening a business. A combination of nine businesses, of two types, unique to this character. The diagrams show how each business works. Your three available private actions. Each private action has a color and symbol. These include activating your businesses and gaining a bonus VP card. When you play a card as a private action, you can take either one or both of the matching actions from your player board. Let's check out the private actions. 
Activate your cultural businesses, identifiable by their green border. If there are no visitors at the river station, you cannot activate any cultural business. To activate cultural businesses, choose from hand one card containing the icon Activate Cultural Business has on your player board. Play it into any queue which allows the card. Discard the required commodities as per the business diagram if any. Use the indicated number of visitors. Gain the rewards. Next, activate your factories. Identifiable by their orange border. Most factories transform one commodity into another. You can use the production of one factory to activate another. To activate a factory, choose from hand one card containing the icon Activate Factories has on your player board. Play it into any queue which allows the card. Discard the required commodities as per the business diagram. Gain the indicated rewards. Activate your reputation businesses, identifiable by their purple border. With some exceptions, reputation businesses execute as actions within themselves. The information presented in their business diagrams walk you through the process. To activate a reputation business, choose from hand one card containing the icon Activate Reputation Business has on your player board. Play it into any queue which allows the card. Discard any required commodities or money. Use visitors if required. Gain the indicated rewards. Some reputation businesses are passive and activate automatically when executing a specific public action. Gain bonus VP card. First the player must pay one of the three costs, each corresponding to sponsoring one of the aspects of the city. After paying the cost, you instantly gain an indicated number of VPs. Then, take one of the four bonus VP cards on display. The chosen card is kept secret. After choosing a card, immediately draw a new one to replace it. The third way to play action cards, is to gain their printed bonus. For this you only have to match the color of the card with one of those allowed in a queue. You can still bump out cards from the queue when playing one for its bonus. First play the card into a queue which allows it. Immediately gain the bonus printed on the left hand side of the card. At the end of your turn, you have to draw one new card in hand. This can be done in one of two ways. First option is to draw the top card from the stack. Alternatively, you can draft one card from the game board. Out of those currently available in the various queues, you can choose any one of them to draft into your hand. There are a few rules that apply. You cannot draft a card that holds one or more of your business HQ meeples. You cannot draft back into your hand the card you have played this turn. You can draft into your hand cards containing other players' business HQ meeples. When drafting one card into your hand, immediately also gain the printed bonus. After this step, your turn ends and play passes to the next player. When you open a new business, its HQ meeple goes on the action card used. While the HQ is still there, the business is not yet fully operational. In order to become so, its HQ meeple must be released from the card, and placed on an appropriate location in the city. Cultural business HQ meeples go only on green locations. Factory HQs go only on orange locations. Reputation HQs go on purple locations. So, establishing a new business in Braille is a two-step process. 1. Open a new business using the public action correspondent to its type. Place the business HQ meeple on top of the action card used. 2. When your HQ meeple is released, place it into any empty appropriate location. Only now the business is fully operational. There are two ways in which your HQ meeples get released. 1. An opponent drafts or bumps the action card you use. 2. You are able to bump out your own card. Once your HQ meeple is released, place it immediately on the map. If you are first to place a business HQ in a neighborhood, then take that neighborhood's bonus token and immediately gain its reward. As you play the game you will discover that things work out best if everybody cooperates on some level. It will pay out, in the long run, to release your opponent's HQ meeples from their cards, even if it may seem a suitable idea to block them. You can activate open businesses, which are not yet operational. In this case, you must pay a cost. It can be, 2 coin, 1 yellow commodity, 1 influence. To activate a non-operational business first pay one of the three costs described above then activate that business as usual. Along with the story of the city, each player will also write their own story, by completing personal story cards. Throughout the game you will be able to complete only 4 of the 6 dealt to you at setup. Choose wisely. A personal story card has the following anatomy. Title. Summary of the requirements. Text explaining in detail the actions needed to complete the card. The bonus or VPs earned for completing it. To complete a personal story card simply follow the text, complete the requirements, and then display it next to your playboard. A personal story card can be fulfilled at any time during your turn, even in the middle of an action. To trigger the end of the game, at least two of the four independent end game conditions must be satisfied. They are, there is at least one business open in each neighborhood of the city. At least two of the three aspects of the city have reached the maximum level of progress. One player has successfully completed four personal story cards. The number of monuments built is greater than two times the number of players. There are multiple ways to earn VPs. They are gained either instantly or at the end of the game. Monuments, give instant VPs. Player story cards, can be both instant or endgame. Gaining a bonus VP card action, instant, according to these tables. Bonus VP cards, which are always endgame. And contracts, instant. This has been an overview and summary of game rules for Brela, City of Progress. While not every nuance and detail has been covered, due to the time constraints, all the important information has been presented. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and now have a clear understanding of the gameplay. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.